Hello, in this video I am going to show you how to configure edge sync between a hub transport server and an edge transport server within Exchange 2010. So the first thing to do is just to review some of the prerequisite requirements. You need to validate that you have the appropriate ports configured in your firewalls to pass traffic in the edge sync process. So you'll see here we've got the internet which is a public network and then we've got the private network which is a private network and a DMZ in the middle. And the edge transport server is a device that's going to live in the DMZ. And this is a computer that's not a member of your private Active Directory domain. Rather, this device has Active Directory lightweight directory services on it and it's going to synchronize select data from Active Directory to the Atom database on the Edge Transport server. So to do that we have to have TCP port 25 open bidirectionally on your internal firewall to pass mail messages back and forth. You also need TCP port 53 open bidirectionally on your internal firewall. So devices in your private network can resolve the name of the edge transport server in your DMZ and your edge transport server can use DNS to resolve names of your private devices in your private network. Beyond that from the internal network to the DMZ you need TCP port 50636 open for a secure LDAP connection and then you should have TCP port 3389 open for remote desktop protocol so you can manage this device remotely using RDP and the remote desktop connection software. From the DMZ to the internet you once again need to have TCP port 25 open bidirectionally so mail messages can go out as well as come in and this is a mail server so that makes sense and then you need TCP port 53 open in the outbound direction so your edge transport server here can utilize internet DNS to find MX records and DNS and resolve those to IP addresses using internet DNS so it's able to send mail. Once you are sure you have all of your TCP port configurations set up on your firewalls, the next step is to ensure that all accepted domains are configured on hub transport servers and what that means here is if you receive mail internally for multiple domain names maybe your company has three or four different aliases they do business with you must configure your hub transport servers to receive mail on all of those domain names so the edge transport server does not reject mail messages coming in to one of the alternate domain names. You also then have to validate DNS lookups between the two servers. So I've got two servers for my demonstration. I've got EX01 and this is an Active Directory domain controller that's also an Exchange 2010 server. The server is running the hub transport role, the client access server role, and the mailbox server role and then I've got ET01 which is an edge transport server that's just running the edge transport role. So from the edge transport server let's click on start and go to command prompt and use NSLOOKUP and from NSLOOKUP we are going to essentially try and resolve the name of ex local, which is my domain for demonstration reasons and we have that IP address of 10 10 10 10 so that's working so now let's do the same thing from the EX01 server so let's go into NSLOOKUP and try and resolve the name of ET01.bkmail.local and we resolve that to 10 10 10 15 now if you've watched one of my previous videos on installing an edge transport server you will have known that the edge transport server cannot be a member of Active Directory and you have to go into the network properties and add the DNS suffix for a fully qualified domain name. So I chose the same domain name as my Active Directory domain bkmail.local. 
I then had to go into DNS on the DNS server and add a static record to resolve et01.bkmail.local to this IP address 10.10.10.15. And we can validate that as well by clicking on the start button, going to administrative tools, and then selecting DNS. Inside of DNS, there's my bkmail.local forward lookup zone, and here is the ET01 record that I added statically. To add a static record, just right click your zone and choose new host, and then type the name in ET01 and then the IP address associated with it, and then add host. So that work has been done. We've ensured DNS connectivity between the two devices. We now need to define all internal hub servers that will exist within our Exchange organization so our Edge server does not reject messages. This cannot be done from a GUI. It has to be done from the Exchange command shell. So we're going to click on Start, and we'll go to All Programs, Microsoft Exchange Server 2010, and then the Exchange Management shell. Once you have the Exchange Management shell open, you need to run a commandlet that will set the IP address of all of your internal hub transport servers. To do this, you type in set dash transport config space dash internal SMTP servers and then the IP address of your internal SMTP servers and I have one which is 10 10 10 10 that's my hub transport server if I had another one I could certainly add that at this point in time as well by putting a comma and then an additional IP address I only have 10 10 10 for now so I'm gonna hit the enter key to run the commandlet we get a command prompt back which is positive confirmation that the command run. There is no indicator that it ran successfully, but if you did not get an error message, you can feel certain that you ran the command successfully. From here, we need to go to the Edge Transport server, and I've got the Exchange Management shell loaded there as well, and now we need to execute a commandlet that is going to create the Edge subscription file. So I'm going to type in new dash edge subscription dash file name quote c colon slash edge subscription dot xml quote and I'm going to press the enter key this creates an xml file that we are going to copy and paste into our hub transport server to complete the setup of the edge sync process. You'll notice here that you get a confirmation screen that is essentially telling you that a lot of the manual configuration that you've completed prior to this will be eliminated if you create edge sync. And I would like to just go ahead and do this. You should take the time and read this so you understand what's happening. I'm going to type in yes and we've now created our XML file. Now I'm running a virtual environment here, so I need to copy the file from C. There's Edge, edge Subscription. Right click, copy, and paste it on my host computer. And then I'm going to go to the host file, copy it, and paste it onto my hub transport server. In the real world, you can use hidden shares to transfer this data quickly and easily. The next step is to actually finish the Edge subscription. So I'm going to go into the Exchange Management Console on my Hub Transport server. Once in your Exchange Management Console, expand Microsoft Exchange on-premises. And then 
expand organization configuration and then expand the hub transport or click hub transport. Under actions click on new edge subscription. A wizard pops up and we need to define the Active Directory site that the Edge subscription pertains to. So we'll click on Browse and I only have one site. If you have multiple sites choose the site where the Hub Transport server is located. I'll click OK and now I need to browse to the subscription file that we created on the Edge server and then copied onto the Hub Transport server. And I've put that on my desktop and there's the Edge subscription XML document. We'll click on Open and we'll click on New. You'll see that it has completed and if you look down here is some data that is commandlets you could have executed from the Exchange Management Shell if you would have liked to. And we'll click on Finish and we have now successfully created an Edge Sync connector to connect the Hub Transport server along with the Edge Transport server. This concludes my demonstration on how to set up Edge Sync in an Exchange 2010 environment between a Hub Transport server and an Edge Transport server. Check back soon for additional videos pertaining to Exchange 2010. This is BrickHouseLabs.com. Thank you very much for watching.